firstly, Daddy, thank you so very much for taking your time and doing this. Now, in Dubai, it's getting ridiculously hot and the summer has just kicked off. And before we get into the nitty gritties about your role in the obstacle course race, just wanted to check how are things with you and how's your day been so far? Well, um, as you know, the day is, is good. Uh, it's getting really hot. But again, since that, we do our uh, running uh, mostly in the early morning. So we target to finish it before the sunrise or right at the sunrise time. And um, the temperature is going higher and higher. But uh, this is also something that will help us uh, during the, the peak season to have a better performance because your body will get used to this temperature. And when it gets colder and colder, the performance gets much better. So for me, I keep on training and at least running in the morning, whether it's summer or, or winter. And I always wake up around 4, 4.30, go to Kite Beach and do this an hour or two hours run based on the program that I'm, uh, I'm having. And this is uh, at least three to four times per week. That's absolutely wicked. And what our listeners should do is, you know, definitely follow you on Instagram because lately you've been breaking your PBs as well. So far as 10 kilometers is concerned, so in the show notes, you know, I'll definitely go ahead and mention all of your Instagram details as well. Now, Danny, can you tell the listeners a bit about yourself? Now, I'm pretty much sure people in the obstacle course race community, particularly OCR Empire, which you're part of, they are aware about it. But to the people who are not part of OCR, can you tell them where you originally from? When did you move to Dubai and how did you move to Dubai? Yeah, um, actually, I'm Lebanese. I'm from Lebanon. I'm 46 years old. I have three boys. My eldest boy is uh, 18 years and he's going now to university. And a lot even of my friends um, in OCR Empire, they don't know even that I am 46 and they always think I am younger. But sometimes I bring my son with me and when they see that my son is as tall as me, (laughs) they know that there is something wrong. So they will start asking about my age and his age and all of this. So I've been in Dubai for the last uh, 18 years. I moved in 2005 to join Shalhoub Group. And I've been with the Shalhoub Group since uh, that time. Currently, I'm the group head of HR operations. And I cover the whole region. I have teams in all GCC countries. And uh, consider Dubai as our uh, home. Absolutely brilliant. Especially for obstacle course race, it is turning out to be a home as well. Exactly, exactly. And you know, but later on in the episode, we'll also try to find out what is the commonalities, what are the learnings our listeners can get from an HR perspective, and what is it that they can implement, let's say, in the fitness lifestyle. Now, one question, you know, which I just thought of right now, between you and your son, who's the fastest runner? I am. Oh, 100%. I am, I am by far. And actually, this is something that happened during the COVID uh, time. When we had uh, the full lockdown and we were not allowed to go out, we live in Motor City in a compound. So we were allowed at that time to go for one hour inside the compound. And I was using this one hour to go for a run. And uh, so at that time, he was like 16 something. And, you know, um, teenagers at this age, they think that they can uh, do everything. <laughs> They are the strongest, the fastest. They they know everything. They are the smartest. Great. So doing this run with my wife and uh, my son, Ryan, uh, he said, why don't we uh, do a sprint race? And I said, listen, Dad, um, you're too <laughs> Oh, Let's keep this for uh, later on when you get better or fitter. So he started challenging me that I'm afraid of doing this race against him. And I'm finding this excuse just to avoid doing the race. And finally, we, we agreed that let's do it. And my wife would be the judge who would reach first. And I can tell you this, this was the fastest sprint that I've ever done in my life. Just to prove to him that I'm bad <laughs> and I'm still faster than you, even though I'm old. <laughs> so he couldn't finish the sprint and he stopped at the middle of the sprint. And then he came to me and said, listen, there is something wrong. You were not running. You were actually flying. Your toes were just hitting (laughs) the ground. And definitely there's a technique that I have to learn. And since that time, this is two years ago, 
uh, he never asked me again to race. <laughs> <laughs> and in two years' time, you've gotten even better, right? Exactly. So now my performance is way better than it was two years back during COVID. That's even. a motivation for him as well, because now whenever I come back from my workout or from my run or from a race, he comes and asks me, how much did you do? What was your pace? How did you feel? How was your uh, race? So he became more interested in knowing and, and understanding the performance and how it goes. And you know, Danny, this just reminds me, I did an interview with Yancy, who is the founder of Deca. One of the most precious moments that he actually has is, you know, when he used to run with his dad. And this is when he was really, really tiny. And he always remembers it right now. So when we were talking, he was literally in tears that, you know, the moment that he has competing with his dad is something, you know, which right now he's well past his 50s. And he still remembers that moment. So, you know, absolutely be- beautiful memory for that as well. Cheers for sharing that thing to us. Now, can you take us back to a moment, Danny, when you did your very first obstacle course race? And how did you find out about it? And what was your initial reaction when you found out about obstacle course race? Yeah, actually, I wasn't into the OCR game. I uh, Before COVID, I was very committed for um, the boot camp. And I was doing this three days uh, per week. Uh, it's early in the early morning, so I used to drive from Motor City all the way to the marina next to the Skydive Dubai to the open public gym. We used to do um, two sessions of um, boot camp over there on Monday and Wednesday, and on Friday, we used to do it on Kite Beach when the weekend was still Friday and Saturday. So yeah. this beach boot camp session, I, I love it, and I'm in love with this, and I've been doing this for the last five years but it's only once per week. So I was doing this, but I was still struggling with uh, the monkey bar, with the multi-rig, with the um, rope climbing, because the boot camp is not about the obstacles. It's more about the fitness and the stamina. But I felt that, okay, now I'm a good in a good shape, and maybe I have to start trying to do some competition. So the first, first OCR race was actually Spartan and Hatta. Okay. This was the first one, and I still remember it. I did the sprint race, which is the 5K. It took me almost one hour, 47 minutes to finish it, which is too much now. <laughs> I can do 15K in, 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 in one hour, 47 now, an obstacle race. But the, I can't tell you, the, the satisfaction to finish my first Spartan race was, was unconditional. I was so happy that I did the Spartan race despite the timing because this was the first race I didn't know what is the average timing for this, such a race. But it was really very challenging. It was self-satisfying. And uh, the course itself in Hatta was really good. And, and until now, people talk about uh, uh, Spartan Hatta. And uh, luckily, they are doing this again in November, the trifecta. I'm going yeah. to do the trifecta on, on that weekend. But uh, this this uh, this race keeps a lot of, of memories. And, uh, and I felt like if I did this, I can do anything. But later on, when I started doing the other races, I just know that what I did before was only the beginning and it was a short race. But I still enjoy it and hold very nice memories from, from this place. That's absolutely great. And one thing which you mentioned, you know, when you were doing your boot camp, you were not too confident about monkey bars. And I very specifically remembered El Wat Bar. You yeah. put out a video about you doing monkey bars. And I was literally comparing your monkey bar with other people. And I have to say, Danny, yours was the smoothest. And, you know, the technique was right. A lot of them were doing it. They yeah. doing it absolutely spot on. So, um, yeah, the good thing about OCR, and especially OCR Empire and training with, uh, with, uh, with Blushi, Coach Blushi, is that they will teach you how to do the right technique. Absolutely. So when I was uh, doing the boot camp and I was feeling that I'm good enough to do this kind of obstacle races, I was doing this using my uh, power, my muscles, my upper body, giving everything that I, I know in, in, in each and every, every single obstacle. Whereas when you become into this game and when you train on the OCR obstacles itself, you get to learn the technique. 
And while using the right technique, you don't need to put a lot of effort and power in this. And when you're learning the technique also, uh, you learn several techniques and you choose what is the most suitable one for yourself. And again, now that I've been into this for so many years, I have a I have permanent shoulder injury in my left shoulder. <laughs> so I know if I'm doing the monkey bar, depending on my shoulder condition, how good or bad it is, I yeah. can shift between the techniques. And you can see me swinging in one race and doing it properly like a monkey. And next time you can see me holding up and using my upper body or my, my biceps for this. So once you have this experience and once you know everything about every single and each obstacle, you know how to work around, find your own way. And the most important thing is to, to complete the obstacle without failing. Absolutely. And lately, you know, you're also kind of becoming the OG of obstacle course race. So can you tell our listeners how many obstacle course races have you done so far? More than 30 obstacle races so far. And I did specifically 17 Spartan races. And last year I did, uh, the, for the first time, I did uh, Spartan World Championship. I was qualified for Spartan World Championship, the trifecta one. And uh, at the same time, I did the World Championship in Abu Dhabi twice. And hopefully we'll do it again this December and we'll do Trifecta uh, Sparta also this uh, this November. And this is all merging up together, right? The Sparta Greece, the Hatta and al So yeah. all three are together. Yes, it's coming one after the other. So we're starting uh, early November with the World Championship uh, in Greece, followed by Spartan, by the Trifecta in Hatta Oman. And the week after, it's the World Championship in, in Abu Dhabi. There are three trifectas. I'm going, I'm doing the trifectas and not the individual races. And last year, I did the same. So last year, I had three trifectas. And this year, I'll have three trifectas as well. Absolutely smashing. Now, let's talk about your experience in UAE. Now you mentioned you've done 17 Spartan race. And I'm pretty much sure I've seen you at Tough Mudder as well. Exactly. And have you done Desert Warrior Challenge as well? So... What is your favorite obstacle course race, Dan? Well, I mean, um, I consider Tough Mother, it's a bit of a fun race. Uh, Spartan races for me are now our bread and butter. And we know it by heart. We know the obstacles uh, because the obstacles are mostly common wherever you travel in the world. 90% of the obstacles are the same. Uh, for me, I, uh, what I like the most is actually the Desert Warrior because there's always something new. Yeah. And not a repetitive uh, uh, OCR race. So maybe 50% of the obstacles are the same, but there's 50 new obstacles that are 50% of the obstacles are the same. And the other 50% is something new that they introduce year after year. Absolutely. I 100% agree. I mean, I often think about Desert Warrior Challenge as well. And, you know, some of the obstacles are absolutely unique and something which I'm not sure other obstacle course race will be able to replicate it. Yeah. Now, in obstacle course race, what are your favorite and least obstacles? <laughs> something that you absolutely love and something that you absolutely hate. Yeah, my favorite will always remain the monkey bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe because I had a lot of challenges in uh, doing the monkey bar, when um, I was only doing the um, uh, boot camp. So Monkey Bar was the first obstacle that I was uh, uh, training on. And I can say that my least favorite is the spare throw in Spartan. <laughs> because actually I don't consider this as an obstacle where you need to put an effort. And it's a matter of luck <laughs> if... You, it, it works or no, especially that this obstacle is a, a, a deal breaker because it's usually at the end of the race. You were at the, among the top three or top five. If you fail to, to hit the spear throw and you have to start doing the burpees, everyone will overcome and, and, and finish before you. So it holds some bad memories. And actually, I don't see that 
throwing the spear is an obstacle that needs a lot of effort. So some people who've never trained or know the spear throw or never e- not even did Spartan race, just come, hit it, and keep on running. And others like Sergey, who's the world champion, the times he fails in, in, in hitting the spear throw. I think 100% agree. And, you know, a lot of the pro athletes, they have also echoed the same thing because no matter how much you practice, what happens at that moment is more of luck. You know, you either get it or you kind of miss it. Now, since you've done so many obstacle course races, and now, to be honest, I consider you as one of the OGs, at least so far as you is concerned in the obstacle course race community. So if there is a message that you'd like to give, let's say, to the race directors and the event organizers, are there any obstacles that you think that can be removed or maybe even replaced? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I would say uh, the the hurdle is 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 an obstacle that doesn't also give much. It's a bit challenging for the short people. It's really challenging. No matter how fit they are, when it's the bar is a bit high, they cannot. It's really challenging, and I, I, I feel it, and I see it, and I always discuss it, especially with the ladies. The race is made for men and ladies, but when it comes to the height, if someone is short but so fit and he cannot jump that high to flip and cross it, it's really challenging. And we just had this discussion two days ago with one of my colleagues who just came from, I think, from Romania. And she came second or third, but still she suffered, you know, to, to cross this, this obstacle. But that's a very valid point. And I very specifically remember a Savage Race Championship and there was a pro athlete called as Ryan Bodhi. Yes. So he was leading the pack, but somehow, somehow, because of his height, he just could not complete the obstacle. As a matter of fact, he was disqualified. And there were other guys who were taller than him. And uh, the point that he said, does make a lot of sense, particularly to me, because I'm only five feet two. So, you know, I kind of 100% agree to what you're saying. Now, in obstacle course race, Danny, is something which I want to find out particularly to you is, can you take us at the darkest moment in a race where you felt like, you know, this obstacle course race is not meant for me. I don't want to do this anymore. So tell us the very specific moment. And the reason I wanted to find out this is in Lever, I did see a lot of guys actually did break down. And exactly. some of them continued, some of them gave up. Exactly. I wanted to find out, you know, what was your situation and how did you overcome that? This this was exactly my answer. Lewa World Championship two years ago was the hardest, hardest Spartan race I've ever done. And it was the hardest Spartan race by by far. And this is the statement of everyone. Even Sergey, even Ryan, the World Championships, they said this was the toughest race now the thing is that um at this race i was not well equipped this was the first spartan that i do in the desert in deep desert because when we did uh, meliha in charge of it was in the desert but we didn't it, it wasn't that deep and it was a short race but doing the trifecta in abu dhabi and in liwa actually the 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 the, the, the sand there is like a kind of a powder it's very, very soft, and I didn't have gaiters for my shoes. Deadliest mistake ever, but we learn from our mistakes. So it's at that race, at the Beast, especially the 21K, where I said, I mean, why I'm doing this? Why I'm torturing myself? Okay, why I am challenging myself? And I don't have to go through this. We go and do the races for fun, to, to, to challenge ourselves, to compete but not to be like tortured and this is actually was was the longest race that I've done I finished it in almost like 5 hours and a half but uh, I was happy at the same time one to finish the race to complete it because as you said a lot of people just crashed on the track and they just stopped and I was so grateful and helpful for a lot of people who uh, were suffering on the track and I did this after doing my first marathon in Abu Dhabi so I was whipped from a way where I had a lot of energy gel I have a lot of salt sticks I had a lot of dates I had the deep heat and deep freeze spray for the cramps and honestly speaking I used most of my uh, stuff on people because I've seen people 
on the sand, crying. People were yeah. screaming. People were just waiting for the rescue. People were uh, sitting at the water station when no water was left and just sitting there and waiting for the, the water delivery to come. Uh, they, they didn't care about the, the race, they didn't care about their timing, they didn't care about anything. They just wanted to wait for the water to come and then decide if they continue the race or they just drop and go back. So uh, Liwa was was a big challenge and it was a big learning as well because I don't think that we will have a, a toughest race than Liwa uh, or running on the sand, especially when you see the European champions and when you speak to them, they were really struggled in running in the desert, especially over there. And this is where for the first time in my life, I see the 600 meters dunes, which was yeah. phenomenal. And a rope at the end of the dune was also something that I can't imagine. And um, we had a very good and bad memories from, from this race. Everyone is still until today talking about it, but it's a learning. And I also remember, you know, the obstacle where they had thrown down the rope and where we had to climb that rope. I think that was absolutely brutal and absolutely wicked. Now, we've talked about one of, you know, the worst experiences, the dark moments that you have. Can you tell our listeners one of your most iconic moments or maybe even funny moments? that you've had during your tenure in obstacle course race, or maybe even a marathon or half marathon? I would say the iconic one was uh, last year in the Sparta Trifecta World Championship. It's a different experience. It's like being part of the Olympic Games or the Football World Cup. It's something so big, so meaningful for the Spartan community or for the OCR communities everywhere in the world. You get the chance to see the top 2000 elite uh, OCR uh, in the world. You live the experience for uh, three to four consecutive days. Um, you enjoy uh, the support of the people over there who lives in this village. You just run in these forests uh, on the track where you can still run and imagine that Spartans were living here. This is their village. This is where everything started. And the whole ceremony from the opening till the end is really something that is, is so meaningful. And um, you, you feel the positive vibes, the energy, um, you feel the empowerment. And it's really, it was a really very, very, very nice experience. And I said, I will never miss any Spartan Trifecta World Championship as, as long as I can do these OCR races. That is absolutely correct. And that is kind of like the birthplace of Sparta. And because of yeah. the location, it just cannot be replicated in any yeah. other part of the world as well, right? So absolutely beautifully said. Now, Danny, right now, you're an active member of OCR Empire. And I think our listeners should definitely look at OCR Empire. They are a phenomenal bunch of people. Now, can you tell our listeners how did you get involved in them and what role, I think you did actually mention earlier on as well, what role does OCR Empire play in shaping you and other people in the obstacle course race community? Yeah, to start with, OCR Empire is my second family. And we don't consider it as a um, sports community or a gym where we just go there for a workout. Uh, the first day that any newcomer comes to the OCR Empire gym, uh, Coach Blushi will tell them, listen, guys, now you're part of the family. This is the first statement that he does. You're part of the family. This is your gym. This is your house. It's an open gym for everyone, even for the non-OCR Empire members. They can go there, train on the obstacles, and go. And then the the father of, of Coach Blushi will come as well at the end of the training and say, listen, guys, this is your house. This is your gym. The door is always open. Just push the door, go to the gym, train, do the obstacles, and go. You don't have to speak to us. You don't have to call us. You don't have to take any permission. And this is something that you can't find in other gyms. Now, um, the way how I was introduced to the OCR Empire is um, I used to do some of the OCR races with a friend of mine. And uh, after COVID uh, or during COVID, we stopped the, um, the boot camp training. And I was looking for a group to train with because I do believe that training with a group would give you a lot of improvement rather than training one-to-one -one with a trainer or with a pri private coach. 
So one, this lady uh, told me that um, she got to know about the OCR, and the name was not OCR Empire at that time. And she gave me the, the details, and I just went there to, to, to do a free trial. And I felt in love with the place, and I uh, felt in love with uh, with Coach Blushi as well because he is a, a guy that uh, really he he gives everything for the game. And since then, I've been one of the most active members of the uh, OCR uh, Empire, and I really consider it as my my second family. And I really. Uh, recommend it for anyone and ask anyone to go there for a free trial and see uh, how we we train uh, try the obstacles that we have and um, honestly this is something that is really helpful because whenever you go for a spartan race you know what to expect you have the obstacles you've been training on these obstacles for so long and you don't have any uh, uh, surprises during the race uh, when I was doing the boot camp, okay, I know that I have a, a strong upper body, I have a stamina, I have all of this, but we don't have the obstacles to train on. You know, so this is a big advantage, and you don't find these obstacles in, in so many other gyms in UAE. And this is why I would, uh, I mean, always recommend people to go there and give it a try. They don't need to be uh, top-notch athletes, they don't need to be champs champions they don't need to have big muscles it's the technique that helps everyone to uh, to do the obstacle absolutely and what our listeners should do is you know check out ocr empire because the facilities that they have is absolutely world class you cannot ask for any better equipment or the obstacles that you actually have some of them are even better than what spartan race actually has it in fact now what i really like about you is you know you've also trained with spartan world champions like sergey even elisa petrova and even Richard Hynek has often been seen in yeah. CR Empire. Yeah. So, you know, how has that experience been, you know, training with those guys as well? Because these guys are at another level altogether, right? Yeah, actually, these guys are professional athletes like Elisa and Sergey. They don't have a job. This is what they do for a living. So they uh, spend six months in Dubai when it's winter in Russia. And then when it's summer in Russia, they go there and do they actually they are trainers and they do boot camps. And um, Richard also is is a is a close friend. He spent some time this year in in Dubai, and whenever he's here, he comes also to the OCR Empire. And actually, they all wear the OCR Empire T-shirts when yeah. they, and they do it just for the fun of the game and because of the love of the game. So training with them and getting these tips from these guys is so precious. Yeah, and they just give it to you as simple as that, and you can see that. A small tip would be a life changer because they analyze the obstacle and they tell you and they keep on trying things and they say, okay, just try this but because they did it before. So they just give it to you. So a lot of trial and errors that they did, they give it to you in a very small advice and you try the first time, the second, the third, and then it works. It's like magic. And it's all about the technique itself. So having these guys giving you the right techniques and the tips and using all their experience and what they went through to give this to someone new is really so precious and I really uh, admire this. And uh, Sergey or Aliza or Richard, they are very, very, very close friends. When they are here, we train together. When they are not here, I always talk to them. We always chat. We always um, put some comments on the Instagram and you always look for their advice and they are always ready and, 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 and helpful and this is this is very meaningful. And when we were in Sparta last year for for five five days, we were all together during these five days and you can see that Sergey and uh, uh, Richard were competing in the world championship and uh, so you see them competing on the track during the race. And then having a uh, lunch or dinner uh, afterwards when the race is done, and then going out at night all together. That that's that's is that's what sports is, and this is what 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 it brings to you. It brings friends. It brings good memories. It gives you a lot of experience, and you learn from these guys. You learn a lot. 
Absolutely. And that is the whole spirit of, you know, doing an obstacle course race as well, helping each other out. Now, Danny, you're also part of Trail Runners DXD as well. And on your Instagram profile, you mentioned that you've done marathon, a lot of half marathon as well. So how does trail running help with obstacle course race? And this answer is more oddly suited for somebody you know, who has not done obstacle course race. Based on your experience, can you share your points? I, I do a bit of everything. Mainly the focus is on OC, OCR and running because the base of the OCR races is running. You need to be a good runner in order to, to be a bit uh, competitive in these races. Uh, now, Trail Runners DXB are my friends as well, and they are part of the OCR empire. And we have this deal that whenever there's an OCR race, we all uh, uh, run under the OCR empire name. And whenever the trail race, we all run under Trail Runners DXB name. That is beautiful, right? You know, uh, so this is this is the thing that we do. But I also participated in so many trail uh, running races, be it in Hatta or uh, here in Dubai. And for me, this is something that would complete my trainings. Because as you know, the OCR races, uh, it's, it's usually done in different locations. And in some of them, you have to be a good trail runner to compete. Yeah. In others, you have to be a road runner to compete. And in some, you have to be a mix of everything. So these uh, trainings with uh, Trade Runners DXB are really very, very, very helpful, especially with the elevation when you go to Shauka to run, because whenever you're competing in Europe, it's not a flat race. Most of the places, there's a lot of elevation. And only Trade Runners DXB, they are the biggest trade running uh, community here, and they are uh, running on a weekly basis without uh, interruption. And this really helps us to uh, to get better in trail running, which will help us uh, later on in these um, uh, OCR races. So I really also advise everyone to 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 try it. Uh, if even if you don't want to be a trail runner, an expert trail runner, but if you're an OCR uh, player, this is really helpful for your training. And you just mentioned that you know you do quite a lot of other things as well. Like starting with training, you do trail running as well. Now, a few months ago, in Dubai, we had the Dubai Gov Games. And you were practicing for it. But unfortunately, you had an injury. And I do believe that the injury just happened a few days before the Gov Games, right? What was the experience like sitting on the sidelines? And can you give us an update on what was that particular moment like? Well, I would say what doesn't kill you make you stronger. Correct. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So actually what happened is that we were qualified for the Gov Games. And last year we were qualified for the Gov Games and I was the team captain as well. So Gov Games is is one of the best experiences that we had in this part of the world, in the GCC. Uh, because again, every year there is new obstacles and you will never know the obstacles until the last day when you're there. So this is the the best part of it. So we were training for four consecutive months as a team, three to four times per week together. And each one was doing his own training program on the side. And exactly five days before the Gov Games, I broke my uh, my foot. And it was a really uh, a shock for me because I was doing everything to be part of this uh, competition. And we knew that this year the level is even higher than, than the previous year. Uh, we were training with the elite team, which was the Sergei team and, and his uh, Russian colleagues. So um, unfortunately, it just happened and I broke it at the end of the session, not even during the training. Oh. I was the jump box and I was stepping down and leaving. And there was a small sandbag behind the box. So I stepped on the sandbag, twisted my leg, and I broke, broke it. And the first two weeks were so hard for me to accept the fact that I won't be part of it. And the week after the Gov Games, we had the Dubai Corporate Games also. Yeah. <laughs> and I am the team captain of, of Shalhoub, and I'm the one organizing and putting all the teams in place. And I participate in, in all the running uh, competitions and I get I used to get a lot of gold medal in this race. So for me, it was two consecutive races and I couldn't do any of the two. 
and it, it was really uh it was a very bad experience for me to go through this uh but then i decided and i said okay listen i don't go to the gym i don't lift weights i can't run anymore i can't do obstacles anymore let me use the spirit to train my upper body and go to the gym so i was going to the gym like three four times a week just doing upper body and strengthening the upper uh, the upper body i had to stay away from running and ocr uh, training for six weeks and on the week seven i started again and uh, but i started much much better than before and it's been like now it's been like two months since i'm i'm training again and and i i and i feel so good yeah but- and you just mentioned about the corporate games at charlo group i very specifically remember you actually posted a video where you actually stood first or second despite the leg injury and i think our listeners should definitely check that video because if i'm not mistaken it was in your left leg you had your fracture Yeah. and you still managed to do quite a lot of these workouts right yeah actually last year i got the first place in the fitness competition uh-huh. the individual fitness competition in the uh, uh, corporate games and i came first as well in the fitness competition uh, teams game and oh, okay. by the way nick was my my partner in in last year oh, okay excellent yeah so i we i came first individual and we came first as a team and i got like another four gold medals in the running uh, uh, race so this year definitely i couldn't run with the cast in my leg uh i couldn't compete in any of the other uh competitions but then i was watching the fitness competitions the individual fitness competitions there was a lot of running in between the workouts so i couldn't do it and i was asking about the teams competition fitness competition and there was no running so i said okay give me give me what is out <laughs> let me try it and i'll see if i can do it or no because um a uh, shalhub group was uh, we had the first place for the last four years and because i'm managing and i'm, I'm, I'm managing this uh, sports community in in our company i wanted to get the first place for the fifth year i wanted the group to be also the f- the first for five consecutive years i like number five so i was trying to do anything to get the m- biggest number of of medals and point and get the first place for the fifth year for the fifth consecutive year so and i just they gave me the workout of the uh, fitness team competition i tried all the uh, the workouts and i can do it the most challenging was uh, the burpee i've tried the burpees and it was fun i said listen guys okay I'll make my own team and we had an elite team. I said I'll be part of the second team. I'll find two more persons and we'll do the the competition. And actually yes, I did it with the cast in my uh, my my leg and uh, we came second. We secured the a silver medal and two points for for the company and at the end of the of the second day we came first as well and so we got it for five consecutive years. That is absolutely badass and it's a good learning for our listeners that you know despite having injury you try to identify what are the things you can still do and smash it and you know for our listeners they should know that uh, the company Ishalu Group which has been in existence for well over half a century yeah they exactly. deal with you know high luxury goods and he did mention about Nick who is the head of innovation and I do have an episode discussing NFTs which will very briefly touch base upon that but what I think you know Danny right now is you are an athlete that i very strongly feel that some of the elite members or pro athletes definitely need to keep an eye on because you're definitely getting better and better by the day one question what i wanted to ask is are there any particular race venues or locations that you're dreaming of competing in and that you haven't done so far and what is it that would probably make it stand out for you Well actually I would love to take part of a few of the uh, Europe Spartan races and so far the only race that we did was the Sparta World uh, Trifecta so um, this year I'm trying to do an uh, one trifecta by the end of September in in the south of France but um this kind of races with the elevation with the track that is a combination of everything would give you a lot of experience and would help you as well to get better and better especially with the um 
better weather conditions, better terrain, uh, the elevation, everything around this will just make you better. Now, recently, also the OCR uh, races are becoming more common other than the Sparta, Spartan races. And uh, this is something that we start, will start exploring. And also Coach Blushi is start to start exploring this. I think he's going in the coming few days to um, yes. to one of the OCR uh, World Championship, which is something also that is new. And Sergey as well and Richard Barr becoming part of it. So it's a very short race. It's not a long distance race. Very short, quick race. But the obstacles are uh, needs a lot of, of power and a lot of experience. So a bit of new European uh, races and a bit of OCR non-Spartan races will also shape you and make you make you better. And this is where I will start looking. Uh, as let, well. let me also give you some breaking news, which I'm not sure if you've heard about as of yet, because I was speaking to one of the organizers and they're planning to have an obstacle course race in Saudi Arabia. And this is going to be an eight hour obstacle course race with a lot of prize money. Eight hours? It's got to be an infinite race. So essentially, it's kind of like an infinite loop. So there will be a loop and it's going to be an obstacle course race. And most likely, they are targeting a date most likely towards the end of this year or the first quarter of 2024. I do think it might be in the next, uh, it might be in the first quarter of 2024. You know, it's going to be eight hours of proper obstacle course race. And, you know, I'll definitely keep you updated on that as well. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, actually, actually, um, for me, this kind of races, it will make you only better. Yeah. And racing for one hour, then you start racing for two hours, four hours, six hours. Like when I did Liwa last year or the year before, I never thought that I can run for six yeah. hours. And I did it. When I did my first marathon two years ago, I did it without training for the marathon because we were just doing our usual running training and i said we said okay let's go and do it we do an easy run slow run we just need to finish the marathon i never thought that i can run 42 kilometers i never thought that i can uh, do this in four hours and a half now definitely if i do it again my target would be three hours and a half to four hours but the idea itself was not there and now that you've done it you say okay okay if i did six hours i can definitely do eight and when you do the eight, you say, okay, I can do now 10 or 12. And this is how you evolve. And this is how you keep on challenging yourself better. Absolutely. And I do think, you know, some of the elite racers definitely need to keep an eye on how your performance is. Uh, Danny, you're also a scuba diver, right? Yeah. I was recently also posted a video where you did uh, diving in one of the deepest diving pool in the world. So what was that experience like? And how is scuba diving experience as well? Well, I've been diving for the last 20 years. Oh. Got my certification in 2003, 2004, before moving to Dubai. And uh, for me, I mean, diving is a kind of meditation. I really enjoy it. I'm in love with this uh, sport. And uh, the experience in the deepest uh, diving pool was uh, was fun and was epic. Uh, it was something that you can't uh, experience every day uh, it's unique because it's the deepest in the world it's fun because you get to go around and see this uh, it's like a building, a sinking building where you can visit the the rooms, go from the kitchen to the bedroom to uh, the, the uh, sit on the bike play basketball, it was a nice nice fun experience but for me diving is a kind of meditation, it's my yoga it's my yoga yoga game because I don't do yoga, but the moment I just jump in the water, reach the bottom, and start the dive, I'm just totally disconnected from everything. I can't even think about anything other than seeing the fish or looking for a good video or for something just to, 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 to enjoy the dive. And uh, unfortunately, I can't do it very often because I have to drive all the way to Fujaira. But uh, I'm, wherever I travel and if there is a nice diving uh, spot, I always, I always go for diving. When have you got a chance to do it at Dubai Mall by any chance? Of, because, course, yes. of course, I did it and I did it three times actually. This was a, uh, because my wife 
she knows what I'm doing and she 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 knows that I like extreme sports as well. So one of my birthday gifts was the skydive, so I did the jump. The second year she gave me the the gift was diving in Dubai Mall with the sharks. Mm -hmm. And after doing this uh dive, I actually did another two because if you do three dives you get a uh, a certificate in in uh, in a specific photo shooting, diving with the sharks and feeding feeding the sharks. And uh, recently, I did the the deep uh, diving pool uh, experience. That is absolutely excellent. And are there any commonalities or any learnings you can take, let's say, from scuba diving and running? Does it help with cardiovascular or does it help with breathing technique or any commonality? Yeah. Definitely, breathing is is um, the the common thing between both, uh, because it helps you to control your breath, uh, especially when you're diving. The more you have a slower uh, breath, the more you have a slower heart rate, the longer you can you can stay underwater, and this is uh, this is key. So you have to be very relaxed. You have to control the breath. You have to find your own pace and just uh, enjoy it. And this is definitely something that would help the runner if he was a scuba diver. Otherwise, uh, you won't. I mean, the dive can be as as short as uh, twenty minutes or fifteen minutes if you don't have a good breath or if you don't control it well. And the same thing for uh, for running. That's absolutely great. Now, Danny, you've done quite a number of events in different locations. What advice would you give to fellow athletes who are preparing, let's say, for the next obstacle course race or someone who is just getting started into obstacle course race and planning to get into obstacle course race? What advice would you particularly like to give them? My personal advice is to always be part of a team. Yeah. That's for me, that's, that's, this is key. The other advice is, to look up at someone who you know that he or she is better than you and try to get as close as much as you can to, to this. And this is, and I'm personally speaking, and I always run with my partner, Amir. There's a 20 years of difference between my age and his age. So I, I do my best to train with Amir because I always have to run behind him and chase him. And this, this is, this is one of the things that makes you better and better. At the same time, when you're training with him, and when he's thinking about the 20 years difference between myself and him, he would say that when I'm 46, I want to be as fit as my partner as well. Now, being part of a group will only make you better. You get to learn from the others. You get to learn from their experience. You get to know from their failures and from their success. You always share the tips and you always share the challenges, the ups and downs. And this is really something helpful, very, very helpful. So for for newcomers to the game, I always advise them to be part of a group, part of a community where everyone will support the other. And you get as well to experience these races when you run as an individual or you run and or compete as a team. And the bonding helps a lot in, in making you better, in, in increasing your performance and in pushing you more and more to train so if you're going alone for a run or for a training if you wake up and say okay okay, let me skip it today but if you know that there is two or three persons waiting for you this yeah. this is by itself is a motivation to let you go out of your bed and go and train because people are waiting for you and you don't want to let them down whereas if you're alone you can easily say okay i'll do it tomorrow and then you fall asleep again so this is my advice for everyone that is absolutely beautifully said and teamwork definitely helps you know, in a positive way and acts as a motivation. And lately, you know, Danny, there is quite a lot of hybrid events kicking up. So you have DECA and you have High Rocks, which is coming up in Dubai in the next few months. What are your thoughts on hybrid events? And if I'm not mistaken, OCR Empire also recently had an hybrid event and maybe in the next coming weeks or months, there might be one in Coca-Cola Arena as well. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I would say these events are key for the sports community. And uh, it, it gives you a wider experience and it helps everyone to be exposed to different competitions and not to limit yourself to the OCR competitions. Uh, 
Um, I mean, when we did the first qualifications for the Gov Games last year, it was the DecaFit. It was yeah. the first time ever that Dec- DecaFit comes to Dubai. And for us as OCR uh, uh, athletes, uh, we never uh, did uh, the, uh, we never used the ski machine. We never used the rowing machine. We never used the assault bike because, as you know, these are the toys for uh, the crossfitters and not for the OCR. So it was really challenging for us to do this rowing and skiing and assault bike or even even hold the, the dumbbells, the heavy, heavy weight dumbbells and walk uh, 200 meters of distance. So this was completely new to us, but uh, it's it's also makes you better and better. So when you do a bit of everything and when you try to, to, to train or to compete in different competitions and be part of these events, you know that how much you're missing. So you're a very good athlete in OCR, but you're an average or below average in other competitions. So why don't you try everything and then see what to do? So for me, it only makes you better. Uh, it does, It's not harmful at all. And uh, also, it's good to have these changes. So you can do an OCR race. You can do high. A week after, you can do a uh, DecaFit if there's a DecaFit. And as you said, uh, we did our own competition during Ramadan. There was more than 80 persons who came. We stayed till 4 a.m. Uh, uh, enjoying this competition. And more competitions will come as well. Like last week, there was a competition in Abu Dhabi for Ring the Bell for Desert yeah. Sheep team. So these competitions are good for everyone. And it's uh, it's good for uh, for everyone to, to try it, to see it. And uh, maybe someone would shift from a, a competition to another and we say, okay, I'm, 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 well, I didn't know that I'm that good in high rocks. Let me focus on high rocks. And that being said, we've included the high rocks training in our OCR weekly training. So on Sunday morning, we have a high rocks training right after our social run because it's something nice and this is something that will help you. And uh, it, it always makes you better. None of these competitions will, 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 will take anything from you. It will only give you more strength, more power. And more commitment to get uh, better and better. One hundred percent agree, and very well said. Now we've done with most of the talks regarding obstacle course race. Now what I wanted to find out is more related to work-life balance. Now Danny, you're the group head of HR Chalu Group, which is an iconic company in the retail industry or luxury retail industry with over half a century of experience in UAE. What role do you think fitness, such as running, stretching, or even meditation? play in your day-to-day work life as well actually all my workouts especially uh, the morning runs and it helps me to start my day with a clear mindset it helps me to be resistant for any kind of negative vibes or problems that might affect my mood being in hr we work with people and only people and working with people meaning that they bring their problems to you you listen to their stories you try to help them you try to motivate them. You try to give them the right advice. And if you personally, you're not in this clear mood, in this clear mindset, uh, it won't be that easy for you to do your job. So for me, this is something that is really helpful. And running in the morning or the workout, being in the morning or at night, it only helps me to come to work with this fresh mind, with this clear mind, and believe me that nothing, nothing would change my mood during the day unless I didn't train on that day <laughs> and, there and something happens, then it's, it's totally different. But uh, I really, I mean, going to the office at 8.30 or 9, for me, it's almost half day because I woke up at 4. Correct, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, so you're already you're already ready for anything. It's not that you wake up at seven thirty, be in the office at eight thirty, and then something happened and wait, wait, give me some time. I didn't wake up yet. No, by the time I'm in the office, it's been four or five hours that I'm awake. And I yeah. already did my workout, and I'm I'm stress free and ready for any challenge. Challenge, and this is really very helpful for my job. And I always preach for this, and I always try to push my colleagues at work to to, to follow the same uh, pace and do this in the morning rather than training in the evening. And those who are not training at at all, I'm also preaching for this 
please come and join us. Just give it a try and see how it works. Absolutely. I 100% agree. And there is a CEO called Nigel Green, who is the CEO of the world's largest independent financial firm. And every day in the morning at four o'clock, the very first thing he does is goes for a run. And he does, you know, pretty much 15K to 16K, sometimes half marathon. And then he posts things via LinkedIn. So, you know, I kind of 100% agree that, you know, it does give you a very clear head. Now, another question what I wanted to ask is, and again, more to do with HR and obstacle course race. Now, your HR experience, how does it help in goal setting? And, you know, does the HR experience help you in setting these goals and getting constructive feedback as well? Now, mind you, Danny, this particular question, what I did was, I'm not sure if you use chat GPT. Yes. So I put all of your questions into chat GPT and I asked them to create one question. So this particular question is more of an artificial intelligence guy asking you this okay. question. <laughs> okay. Well, I would say it's my work that is helping me and it's my workout that is helping me as well. Because uh, before any race, I, I'm, I'm a very constructive person and a very organized person. I put a plan for the race, the same way how I put a plan for my day at work. So I have my agenda and I know I have my meetings and I know exactly how my day would go. And I always keep a few hours for the emergencies because in HR there's always some emergencies that comes. So I don't have a full uh, calendar of, of meetings per day. I always leave a few hours for myself, for the, for the reflect, reflection. And for the surprises in order to have time to solve these, these surprises or problems. Now, when it comes to uh, OCR races, I plan the race or put the plan in advance. Be it for an OCR race or be it for a road race or any competition that I'm doing, I put the plan and I work by the plan. And I always put plan A and plan B. So this is my ultimate plan and this is plan A. This is what I need to follow. If on that day I was not lucky enough and my body was not helping me, then I will go to plan D. And so, and I do the same at work or in any competition. It's about planning and putting plan A and, and plan B. I 100% agree and I'm definitely going to take a lot of learning from this as well. Now, one message to your fellow colleagues who are, let's say, not into fitness. I think we have a common friend called Bonnie Water. We used to work at Shalup Group and he's a lazy person. Yeah. So what advice would you like to give to colleagues you know, who are not into fitness? Well, I would say, one, it's never too late. Uh, I'm already 60, I'm already 46 years old. And until now, I see a lot of people who are competing who are 70 years old, 75 years old, and even 80 years old. And you see these people, they are still running. You still see these people still uh, uh, competing. And I also hate uh, hearing people when they say, I don't have time. That's the worst thing that I can, I can hear. And I will never, never accept this as an answer. Uh, I'm a father of three. I have a very senior position. I have around... 140 persons within my uh, team. I travel at least three, four times per week, per, per month for on business trip. I train six to seven days per week and I do like 10 to 12 workouts per week when I run in the morning and do the workout in the evening. I still have time for my family. I still have time for my work. I still have time for myself. So this is the worst answer that, that I can, I can accept when people would say, we don't have time. How do you find time? There is time from 5 a.m. to 8. There is time. Right. And the evening, there is time. You just need to plug and block block this time. And it's, it's all yours. When I did my executive MBA uh, five, six years ago, I never thought that I can make it because I had to study at least 20 to 30 hours per week. But I did this for 18 months. When, when I finished my executive MBA, I found out that I have plenty of time that I don't know how to do, what to do in this time. So it's the same thing. You just have to block this time for yourself. And you don't have to sleep till 8 or 9 and go at work at 10. I 100% agree. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. My brother, he works at Emirates NBD Bank. This particular part, 
I'm going to make him listen to it all and all again because he does not go to the gym at all. And there's this saying, you know, it's always the busiest person who has spare time. So, you know, planning your work, I think I 100% agree to it. Now, Shalu Group, the company that you're in, they are lately in the news in Metaverse. Now, one question which I wanted to ask and something which you did talk about earlier on as well. What are your thoughts on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? I mean, do you like it, don't like it? Or what are your honest thoughts on that? Well, I'm not into it. I had few investments in in uh, bitcoins and in cryptocurrencies, but I did it out of curiosity, just for the sake of uh, uh, trying it. And now I'm on a dormant side of it, but I do believe that uh, for the future, this is something that we would need, and it's definitely going to to come again, it's stronger than before, because I know that now it's uh, it's it's at the weakest. Uh, uh, and the hardest time and I know a lot of people who lost a lot of money uh, patience I think patience is key in, in, in this in kind of investment and uh, you just need to uh, to sleep on your investments if you can and wait for it and to be honest Danny one reason why I wanted to ask you this is because I knew you were from Lebanon and one of the OGs from Bitcoin is a guy called Dr. Sefuddin Amos I'm not sure if you've heard of him yeah. And he has written fantastic books called as the Bitcoin Standard and the Fiat Standard. I think a lot of the listeners from the cryptocurrency world, and maybe even in the obstacle course race community, should definitely check it out. So, you know, he goes and explains what are the benefits of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Now, we've heard about Metaverse and one of the visions of Sheikh Hamdan is for Dubai to be the top 10 city in the world so far as Metaverse is concerned. There are also plans of changing GDP to Metaverse domestic product. I'm not sure how that thing will work out. And believe it or not, one of the first protocols or projects to kick into Metaverse was fitness. So what are your thoughts, let's say maybe a few years from now? Do you think Obstacle Course Race will have a space in the Metaverse? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, when, when you're living in Dubai, everything is possible. There's nothing impossible. And I would be very much uh, curious to see how this thing will evolve and what what they can do. But yeah. nothing is impossible. Absolutely. And as a matter of fact, just five days from now, Apple is planning to launch a virtual reality and a mixed reality headset. So, you know, things are definitely going to move at a much faster pace. But what I think is when it comes to obstacle course race, there is a different feeling when you're actually running in sand, getting dirty, the mud. There's, you know, a completely different feeling altogether, which I hope does not get replicated. Now, some fun bit of questions, and this is no, not more to do with obstacle course race, but more to do with some fun related stuff. Which celebrity do you think Danny could absolutely smash the obstacle course race? Jason Statham. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yes, he's physically gifted, right? I'm a fan of Jason. Yeah. And the second question what I wanted to ask is, and the second question as well, is uh, I got it from Chad GBD, in fact. Is there an HR code or principle you try to emulate an obstacle course race? Yeah, I would say believe you can and you're halfway through. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. That just is absolutely it beautiful. It and just give it a try and this is how it will all start. That is absolutely brilliant saying. And one final question, Danny. What is your favorite gym equipment? Uh, well, I would say definitely not the assault bike. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I like free, I like free free dumbbells trainings, okay. and I started to fall in love with the rowing machine. Oh, rowing machine is kind of addictive as well. There is a guy from Inner Fight. I'm not sure. If you, yeah, he did a oh, full marathon for 30 days, right? And rowing machine. Yeah. So absolutely brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, Danny, for doing this. Really, really appreciate it. You know. Thank you Thanks. once again, and I do think a message is for the elite runners, especially in the obstacle course race, so definitely keep an eye on Danny, because he's definitely going to be competing and definitely will give you in my age, time. Let's be realistic, in my age group. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, when you mentioned that, you know, uh, the guy whom you're running with, there is a gap of 20 years, I was wondering, what are you talking about? Because I was thinking the gap might be just of five years. I don't know, it's 20 years, 20 years. Absolutely smashing. And am I right in saying that in the OCR Empire, you are heading the Sunday run or Wednesday run? Am I right in saying that? 
Yes, Wednesday and Sunday, we, these are the social runs. It's a very slow-paced runs. On Wednesday, we run 45 minutes, and on Sunday, we run for one hour. And I am one of the pacers, and I'm leading this. And um, it's for everyone. It's an open invitation for everyone. And we can, whenever we are a big group, we can split in smaller groups, and each pacer will be leading uh, a, a small group with a specific uh, pace. So. No one should be uh, afraid or worry about running with us because we have a pacer for everybody. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much, Danny, for doing Thanks. this. Really, really Thanks appreciate it. Thank you. Have Thank you very much. Have a nice one. You too. Bye.